All right, so in this video, this is a really quick video. All right, so we're going to talk about ankle relationships. Now, again, in class, I thought that everything would be very straightforward because there are some things that are um, exactly with definitions, very straightforward, all right? So here for vertical angles, notice that we have definitions, right? Two angles across from each other. Um, on intersecting lines, they're always congruent. Then you have linear pairs where two angles uh, they're right next to each other, that's what adjacent means, and they're also supplementary. So when you have two angles next to each other, they add together to equal 180, um, they will fall on a straight line. That's what a linear pair is. Now then you have the definition for a supplementary, two angles that sum together to equal 180. Then you have complementary, two angles that sum together that equal to 90, when you add those together, and you have adjacent, which means two angles that are next to one another. All right, good deal. So here are all the definitions. If you still did not understand uh, these definitions, I told you guys to use the internet or to look some things up. You can also watch a video if you would like. But then also there were examples on the back side. And again, we did classify and um, talk about and discuss, you know, what, what answers we got when we tried to do this on our own. All right. So again, I'm going to be referring everything um, on this sheet All right, to do this homework. All right. So now let's get to the worksheet that I passed out in class. Let me get a copy of it. The sheet that I gave you guys, and I'll zoom in, was this one here. I believe we did one through nine in class pretty easy, and then I think I did one or two of these. We did not get to get to the back side, or we did do, actually we did, we did a couple of these. So I'm gonna jump around, um, try not to do ones that we've already done. If you have any questions, I can't stress enough that if there's something you don't understand, then just come and ask me. Okay, moving on. All right, so one, through, I want to say four was super easy. Number five, I want to do this one. So again, one thing I notice about this particular problem is, you know, I'm seeing that these two lines intersect here. So automatically, as soon as I see intersecting lines, right, I go back to this definition and I think about vertical angles because it says two angles across from each other on intersecting lines. They're congruent. So when I look at this one, the 72 and the y, I'm going to go ahead and say y is equal to 72 degrees because it's vertical. Okay, that one's pretty easy, right? So this is 72 degrees. All right, the next thing that I would do, okay, is I see this little right box. Actually, that would have been the first thing I do. This is 90 degrees because it's a right angle. Okay. Now, uh, because I say this is 72 and this one is 72, y and x, they fall on the same straight line, they're also adjacent to each other. So that means they are linear pairs and they are supplementary. So again, two angles that are adjacent, adjacent means, the definition is right here, next to each other. So two angles that are next to each other and supplementary form a straight line. Supplementary, again, two angles that add to 180. So again, all the information is there. All right, so here I'm gonna say, Hey, y plus x, because they're linear pair and supplementary, they sum together and equal 180. So I'm going to say 72 plus x equals 180. Put the degree symbol. And again, when you want to isolate a variable you are solving for, you do inverse operation. So I'm going to subtract away 72, because actually I'm adding to this x 72. So if I take away 72 here, what I do to one side, I do to the other then again, I'm going to have x by itself, right? So uh, 180 minus 72, you can just borrow and do the math. So we have a 7 there, a 10, so 108 degrees. That is the x value, okay? So, so far I have y is equal to 72. I've boxed that answer for my teacher. And then I would say x is equal to 108 degrees. Box this answer because, again, this is a supplement to this one. And then of course they want z. Now the next thing I realize is, hey, if this little piece here is 90, then that means this here is also 90. Everybody see that? So when I look just in this one little quadrant here, y'all see that? Yes, we can. So we have that these two sum together as complements. They sum together to equal 90. So if I do 90 minus I take away the 72, I can figure out what this little piece for z is. So I'm going to borrow, make this an 8, 
make this a 10, so it would be 18 degrees. And again, to check yourself, you can say, hey, does 72 plus 18, does that equal 90? And yes, it would. So the two or three solutions now, I'm going to squeeze this in, Z is equal to 18 degrees. And another way that you could really check this, if you wanted to, is you could sum all the angles in this problem and see if you get 360. So on the calculator, I'm going to do that for you real quick. Okay. So I'm going to take the 72 plus X we said was 108. So I'm going to add that in plus the 72. And again, I'm just coming this way uh, clockwise. Okay, 72 plus... We said that Z was the 18 degrees, and then I have this 90, and there's the 360, okay? Because again, in a full, complete circle is 360, so that works. All right, All right so moving on, um, I want to say 6 through 9 was fine. You're more than welcome to um, ask me a question. I'm just going to do two of these. So now we get into just a little bit of vocabulary with all three I'm sorry, all four of these are different. But this one says A and B are complement. So as soon as you see complement or complementary, you might as well just go ahead and write, hey, that's something with 90 degrees. As, you, as soon as you see a word 1 and 2, angle 1 and 2 form a linear pair, refer back to this, your notes. And again, right there, linear pair fall on a straight line. They are adjacent and supplementary. So that means that the two angles sum to 180 because they're supplementary. So right here in linear pair, I would tell myself, hey, something with 180 degrees is involved. Okay, just looking at some vocabulary. Uh, angle P, angle Q, R, supplementary. There's another 180, 180 degrees. And then vertical means they're equal and congruent. So if I highlight this word right above it, we can put equal. And before I get into solving uh, these two out of the four, then again, here's an example of vertical angles. So right here is 43 and 43 because they have intersecting lines and they are across from one another. So this one is 43 degrees. And then just like I showed about uh, linear pairs where they are adjacent to each other, fall on a straight line, we can solve for X by again, if these two angles sum together to equal 180, then if I do 180 minus the 43, it will give me x, okay? So here I'm going to borrow for 7, 10, 137 degrees is our x. And again, you can add those together and see if they're 180. All right, so those are just a couple of quick things, but let's try some of these. All right, so it says angle 1 and angle 2 are vertical. If the measure of 2 is 105, then what is 1? So again, if they're equal to each other and 2 is 105, that means angle 1 is also 105 degrees. And again, I move quick in class because some of it is just really self-explanatory. All right, this one, angle A and B are complements or complementary, meaning they sum 2, use the sheet, 90 degrees. Okay, so if A plus B, angle A plus angle B equal 90 degrees, then if the measure of A is 42, do your substitution, you're looking for angle B. So you would basically, again, subtract the 42 away from here, move it to the other side because you're trying to figure out what B is. So you do inverse operation. So I'm going to do on the side 90 minus 42. Borrow. Law this does not require a calculator. Okay. So for this one, it's 48 degrees. Okay. That should be pretty easy. So angle B is 48 degrees. Okay, and again, if you want to use the calculator after you get some answers, is you can check yourself. Hey, it's 48 plus 42 because these are complements of each other. They should sum to 90. Do I get 90? Yes, I do. Okay, so those are easy. Okay, all right, let's jump around and get into more algebra, which, again, I don't know what the struggle is with algebra, but uh, again, come to tutoring and take tutoring serious, and then uh, I can definitely help you to understand if you need a review. All right, so if I look at number 10, we have, and I told you guys in class, get in the habit of either using your finger or your pen or pencil, mainly your pencil, and just trace over what they're talking about. They go in order. So PQT, so P through Q to T. So they're talking about this angle here 
it's the expression 3x plus 47. And the measure of angle SQR, so here's S, here's Q, and then here's R, which is going this way. The expression is 6x minus 24, sorry, 25, I was going to write 25. So now I notice, hey, there's intersecting lines. These two angles are opposite of each other. So when I stare at this, guys, I think vertical. So I would tell myself, using vocabulary, vertical angles. And they want to know, find the measure of SQR. So they want this one right here. Okay, so if they're vertical, and you can still use the sheet or the internet, vertical means two angles across from each other on intersecting lines, and they are always congruent. So if they're congruent, that means those two expressions they gave me, I can set them equal to each other. So 3x plus 47 is equal to 6x minus 25. So let's solve for x, okay? So again, uh, in the algebra class, I teach this. I wasn't your algebra teacher. Letters left, numbers to the right. So I'm going to move the x term that's over here on the right, move it over to the other side. Okay, so I'm doing my letters to the left, but before I move any term from one side of an equal to the other, I have to do inverse operation. So there's a positive 6x, I gotta put a minus. And I'm putting it right under the same term. So 3x minus 6x is negative 3x. Drop the 47 down. And then I'm also going to set it equal to negative 25 minus 47. I'm moving my numbers now, my constants, to the right side. Change the sign. So now I have negative 3x is equal to 2. And we're going to add those two together. Okay. So now I have 7 plus 5 is 12. Carry the 1, 6, 7, negative 72 when we add uh, negative 25 plus 47. You, get, you just have to know that two negatives, you have to add them and keep the same sign. All right, so because we now have um, the negative 72, we're not done. Divide by negative 3 for both sides, okay? And I want to say for this one, I mean, if you want to use the calculator, we can divide it out. 24, and it's going to be positive because I know a negative divided by a negative is a positive, so your x is 24. Not degrees or anything like that. So after we do this, I'm running out of room. I'm going to be on a sheet of paper next. So x is 24. Now you take that 24, and because they wanted the angle measure of SQR, plug in the 24 right here. So for the final step, 6 times 24 minus 25 Let's see what that equals to. We can grab the calculator. 24 times 6, and then subtract 25 away. So we get 119, okay? Now the cool thing is, once you sit back and you say, okay, I believe and I feel and I did my work, angle SQR is equal to 119 degrees. What you could do to check yourself to make sure at least you're right is, hey, these are vertical uh, angles. They have a relationship. So plug that same 24 in here. See if this becomes 119 because they're congruent and equal if you're vertical. So I'm going to do 3 times 24. Add 47 to it. What do you know? I did get 119. Okay. So that sounds like a really good solution and at least it makes sense that my vertical angles are congruent. Alright, let's go to number 12 and I'm going to the back side. Alright, for number 12 it says, again, trace over it, uh, KNM, if you want to get a highlighter. So K to N to M, this angle here, has the expression 8x minus 5. And then M and J, so right here, M N to J, is the 4x minus 19. So when I look here, they're talking about in here, that is the 4x minus 19. Okay. All right, so now one thing I noticed, though, is that these two angles, K, N, M, and M, N, J, they fall on a straight line. So if you want, you can trace over it and extend it. So they are supplementary, meaning the two angles, they add together to 180, and they're linear pairs because they're next to each other. 
look back at the definitions. Linear pairs are two angles that are adjacent or next to each other and they're supplementary. They form a straight line. This stuff's pretty straightforward. So now I'm going to take 8x minus 5, add 4x minus 19, set it all equal to 180. Okay. Now I'm going to combine like terms, doing algebra. So 8x plus 4x is 12x. Negative 5 minus 19 is going to be negative, negative 24, I want to say. And now again, your variable or letter, it's already on the left side of the equal. So let's move this number or constant to the right side. So change the sign. Okay, so this is fine. Now I have 12x is equal to positive. So we got to add this together, 10. So is that uh, 204? If I do 180 plus 24, that's 204. And then we need to divide by 12 to both sides. So now we have x is equal to, let's do 204 divided by 12, 17 is x. All right, so we got x is 17, and they wanted um, k and m. So right here, k to n to m, but let's plug in 17 there as our unknown value. So 8 times 17 minus 5. We can definitely do the scratch workout. Um, it's really, uh, really important that we make sure we don't lose the basic stuff to depend on the calculator. But 131 is the answer. All right, so we got 131 degrees is equal to angle K and M. All my work is there. It would be a lot neater on a sheet of paper, but at least all my math is there. All right, so that takes care of, I only didn't do four of the problems. All right, let's go to the back side. So I'm gonna jump around and get to some trickier ones. I want to say in class we did do some of these, okay, but I do want to talk about putting together statements, okay. So again, looking at 14 real quick. So R and S, these two angles, are complementary, meaning they sum to 90 degrees. So you would basically um, do R plus S your two angles, set it equal to 90. They gave you expressions for R, they gave you an expression for S. Just substitute those in right below. Put your plus sign because you're summing it together. Set it equal to 90. Solve for X, pretty easy. Supplementary, same thing. All right, so now let's get to 16 and 17. Okay, if you want the answer to this, I'm gonna just don't understand. Okay, add 95. Just in case someone says, you know, it wasn't worked out, I didn't know. But we should be able to combine like terms and um, go from there. All right. So, again, I just did 95 divided by 19 because, again, over here I got the 95. And then when I did my division, x was 5. And they wanted to know what is equal r. So take that x is equal to 5, plug in 5 right here, and get your final answer. So 12 times 5 is 60. 60 minus 3 is 57. So angle R is 57 degrees. Done. All right, just wanted to show that. All right, let's go to 17. Well, 17 has complement as well. I'll go to 16. All right, angle 1 and angle 2 are linear pairs, meaning they are next to each other, fall on a straight line, and they sum to equal 1 8. They are, again, um, linear pair means supplementary. All right, so it says the measure of angle 2, which is this one here, read carefully, it is 6 more, 6 more than twice the measure of 1. So be really careful with this and read for understanding. So angle 2 is who I'm talking about. When they use the word is, that means equal. So angle 2 equals is 6 more. So I want to add 6, then twice the measure of angle 1. So basically 2 times angle 1. Can you write that a little bit better? So basically I have 2 times angle 1's measure, which let's just call that one bx. Okay, so 2x. I add 6 to that, 
that will equal angle 2. So now I just made the expression for angle 2. Okay. Now the tricky part for some people is angle 1 becomes our x because it referred to angle 1. So now what I have to do is say, hey, but I know these two angles, they're linear pairs. So angle 1 is your x plus angle 2, we just made the expression 2x plus 6, set it equal to 180. Just like that. So now we got x plus 2x, which is 3x. Add the 6, has to equal 180 because they're linear pairs. Now again, letters left, numbers to the right. So leave your variable here on the left side of the equal. Leave it there. But move this number constant, move it away to the other side. You're trying to figure out what x is. So the opposite of addition is subtract 6 from both sides. Now we have 3x is equal to 180 minus 6 is 174, I want to say. Divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals, so now I have 174 divided by 3, 58 is x. So now, again, once you have your x value, they wanted you to find measure 2, angle 2. So we already have this expression here. So for the x, let's plug in 58. Angle 2 equals 2 times 58 plus 6. All right, so now I take the 58 times 2, and I'm going to add 6 to it, 122. All right, so somewhere in all this craziness, right, we'll put angle 2 is equal to 122 degrees. And we could find angle 1 because it's a, a supplemental, I'm so sorry, a, a linear pair or supplemental. So we have 180 minus 122. Angle 1 is actually 58, coincidentally. All right. That's that. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Not coincidental. Because we said the x in this case, we made it angle 1. So yeah, this is your angle 1. That's fine. All right, here we go. All right, hopefully that makes sense. I'm just going to set up number 17 for you, and you can solve it. And then I'm going to finish the uh, two more at the bottom. All right, angle J and K are complementary, meaning that they sum to 90 degrees. So angle J plus angle K equals 90 degrees. And then, notice what information they gave us. The measure of angle J is 18 less than the measure of K. So it's 18 less. 18 less means subtract. So I'm going to say angle J equals 18 less, take 18 away, than the measure of K. So we got angle K minus 18 is J. Call angle K your X value. That's angle J. And then again, once you have that expression right here, you're going to plug it in for j, and then you know k is x, and then solve for uh, x. So x right here, x minus 18, plus k is x equal to 90 degrees. Combine like terms, x plus x is 2x, minus 18 equal 90, add 18, add 18. So now we got 2x is equal to 108. I'm going all the way to write it. 2x is equal to 108. And then we divide that by 2, it should be 54. So let's just see. 108 divided by 2, 54 is our x. I just divided by 2 to both sides. Okay? Now, we said x was our k value, so it said uh, find the measure of each one. So this is your k because angle J was referencing K. Just replay the video of what I said. Now, because they're complementary, J and K, if this guy is 54, okay, I'm going to do 90 minus this to figure out what my J value is. So 90 minus 54, 36. Okay, so just to be clear on this one, angle J, um, angle J is 36 degrees. And angle K is 54 degrees. All right, that's easy. All right, let's jump around. Let's look into these words called bisect, okay? So when something bisects something else, it cuts it in half, two pieces that are equal. So remember that bisect means cut half, 
cut in half two equal pieces. All right, so let's look at number 19. So we have segment MO. So right here, I'm looking from here to here, and I think there's a little arrow. If you look real carefully, it's just really tiny. So we have ray, actually. Ray MO bisects or cuts in half PMN, that's the total angle, at 74 degrees. So that means from here to here is 74 degrees. Again, P to M to N is equal to 74. Then we have O N N. So O M N, this little piece right here, is the 2x plus 7. So this part right here, 2x plus 7, find x. Okay, well, the only information I have right now is that this whole thing is 74. Okay, this whole thing is 74. And then they told me O M N is 2x plus 7. Okay, well, if this whole piece here, guys, is 74, and this piece right here is this expression, right? Then the only thing I'm thinking about is, real quick, OMN, angle, OMN, plus angle, PMO, PMO, PMO. Yeah. it must equal 74 degrees. And I'm going to read it again just to be careful. So we know that ray, MO, this one here, it cuts this in half, this total, right? And uh, it bisects and cuts in half PMN. Now PMN is 74. The whole thing is 74. This piece here is 2x plus 7. So you know what I could do? I could say if this whole thing is 74 and I want to cut it in half, just half in that. You all know, see? So let's do 74 real quick divided by 2, just to figure out, hey, how much is this piece here? How much is this here? Because they're basically equal. So 74 divided by 2 should get 37. So that means, in my mind, if this is 37 plus this is 37, it's going to add to 74. So set this expression right here equal to the 37. So again, I halfened the 74 because this bisects that entire angle, cuts it in half, now I'm going to take this angle, and that is how much it is for this one. P, M, O, and O, M, N are also going to equal 37. hope that makes sense. So let's do 2x plus 7 equals 37. Subtract 7 from both sides. 2x is equal to 30. x is equal to 15. Okay. So again, always take your time. Reread, reread. All right, let's look at number 20. This is the last one. So for number 20, very carefully we're reading. It says, if ray EF bisects CED. So here's C to E to B. And they're saying to you that this piece here, ray EF, it bisects. It cuts it in half. It's in half. All right, so that means this piece here is equal to this piece here. All right, so now they say CEF. So C to E to F is this expression here, 7x plus 21. And then they said FEB, so I trace it, F to E to B, which is this piece here, is 10x minus 3. And because ray EF is bisecting, cutting this in half to two equal pieces, set them equal to each other. So 7x plus 21 equals 10x minus 3. And we're trying to figure out what DEB is, okay? So right now let's solve for x. So letters to the left, do your inverse operation. Negative 3x plus 21 equals negative 3. Subtract 21 to both sides. So negative 3x is equal to negative 24. This is positive 8. All right, so now that I know what, that x is equal to 8, I can plug them in here, the 8 and here, and I could solve uh, for each individual measure, and they better be equal, right? Okay, but they wanted DEB, okay? 
So for the moment though, let's just see. Let's plug the 8 into here. We agree, 7 times 8 is 56. 56 plus 21, okay, it's 77. So if this piece here is 77 degrees, then this piece here is 77 degrees. And because they want us to figure out what angle DEB is, D to E to B, which is this piece here, well, one thing I'm noticing is that, hey, if I rotate through here to here, and then I keep coming, won't I make a straight line? You see that? So basically, I'm telling you that one, two, all three of these angles, they're going to sum up to 180. Okay? They're all supplement of each other because they sum, right, all three of them to 180 because they fall on a line. All right. But I got 77 plus 77 plus, and then I don't know what my uh, DEB is. So angle DEB, set it all equal to 180 degrees because, again, I'm on this line. And if I rotate through all the way to here, that's 180. Okay. So 77 times 2 is 154. And then again, I'm going to subtract 154 from here to the left, to the right, and that's the answer. So, minus one. So positive 36 degrees. All right, so I hope that helps. It's a long video. But again, I did go through them. And again, I'll take questions when I see you guys. But it's pretty straightforward. Now, the only thing I wanted to show, because I saw this, here's the homework. There's front and back. But there were some that were a little bit tricky, I think. Like, for instance, number 16. Notice how it's talking about x and it's talking about y. And they say find the values of both x and y. Okay? Just like even on number 15. So remember, be really strategic, but I'm going to get you started. Label what's there. So this is 90 degrees here because of the right angle. And then um, I would tell myself, hey, you know, this piece here, under here, that's the 5x minus 17. And then this piece here is the 3x minus 11. And then what do you notice? They're both sitting on the line. They're both linear pairs. So if I do 5x minus 17, add 3x minus 11, equal it to 180, I can solve for x and those angles. So 5x plus 3x is 8x. Negative 17 minus 11 is negative, uh, we've got to add those, right? So negative 28 equals 180. Okay, I'm going to solve for x, so add 28. What I do to one side, I do to the other. That's no longer there. Now I have 8x is equal to, um, I want to say this is going to be 208. Oh, yeah, 180 plus 28 is 208. So we got 208. Now divide by 8 to both sides, 26. Okay. Divide by 8. One more time, so you all can see it. Divide by 8, 26. So I got x is equal to 26. Okay, so now I got my x value. All right, so now it gets a little interesting, right? Because it's pretty much like, hey, how can I figure out this y value? Okay, so let's see. Um, just so we know, uh, again, there's always one way to, more than one way to go about doing this. But let's see what we would do. So in my mind, this is what I'm thinking, is uh, these two are intersecting lines. Do you guys see this? See how x with this line here? Okay, again, there's no intersection happening here, okay? But there's an intersection with the straight line and then this slanted one. Okay, so now because this line and this line are intersecting, it's going to form a vertical angle, okay? So that means if uh, this right here I can solve for this one. It's congruent and equal to this one here. 
All right, so x is 26. Let's plug in 26 right there. 3 times 26 minus 11. So now we got 26 times 3 minus 11, 67. Okay, so 3 times 26 minus 11. So this is 67 degrees is this piece here. So that means this one is 67 degrees. If I get on that. And then the last thing, if I want to figure out, you know, what is y? Well, the one thing I know is that all three of these angles here, they fall on a straight line. So they're going to sum together all three angles to 180. Let me do this on my sheet of paper. All right, so I'm going to take the 67 plus the 90 plus that expression 2y plus 5 and set equal to 180. So 67 plus 90, 157. But then 157 plus this extra 5, got 162. So now I got 162 plus 2y equals 180. Subtract the 162 to the other side. So we're going to drop down our equal sign, drop down the 2y, 180 minus 162 is 18, and then divide by 2, y is 9. All right, guys. All right, so I can't stress enough that a lot of these problems are pretty straightforward and common sense. Um, <coughs> Again, come to tutoring, ask questions in class, read carefully, find the value of x if q is bisect. So this is cutting this in half, right? And they already told you, hey, p, q, r, down here, sorry, p, q, r, all of this is 82. And if this bisects, well, this is half of 82, okay? So you basically set this equal to whatever half of 82 is, which I believe is 41. So again, some of them are straightforward. Just read them carefully, and then let's see how you guys do tomorrow.